Said is there because I can't see it. Ah, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. That song just brings joy to my heart because it can be. And I hope you're all doing very well this morning. Uh, we want mm -hmm. to thank you for then, joining like, us. Given the yeah. uh, Sally, Sally, please mute. Ah, super. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. We start in the next two minutes. Uh, you can see we have more people joining us. Uh, Sally, how are you this morning? Sound check. Are you well? You're on mute. You're on mute. Uh, Sally, you're on mute. Yes, Rose. Hi. Uh, super. I am good. You're good, Rose. <laughs> I'm good. I think there's a delay in the link a bit, but uh, we are here. I hope the rest of us can hear as well. Uh, I, we thank God for you, and we thank God that you're here, and we thank God for everybody who has joined us, everybody present. Karibuni sana. Tell a friend to tell a friend that we are live and it can be. So a bit about Sally so that we can go ahead because uh, I know this topic is going to be very exciting, very interesting, lots of questions, comments on the chat, please let's do this. Let's ask as much as we want at the last 15 minutes of this session, we will be able to, um, to, uh, to pick up some questions and ask Sally to respond to some of your uh, comments and uh, and uh, thoughts. Um, we will be recording the session, so I think uh, the Zoom link has warned you enough. And we thank you for allowing us to do that, because what happens is that we get to get more people to hear and to learn and to engage uh, with us. As Anthony Sana, this is powered by Dada. Dada just simply means a sister, or D A D A means dare to aspire, dare to achieve. My name is Rose Kishuki, sector lead, and I'm joined in this call by my colleague in Dada, Katuma Lilian, who is our head of sales at Dada. We also have our uh, head of women banking proposition, Dr. Selpa Owich. We are very happy to host you today. Karibuni sana. Now let's talk a bit about Sally so that you know where she's coming from. So Sally is appropriator of the law firm uh, Boya Mahihu and Company Advocates. 
and has been an advocate for 36 years. She's also an arbitrator and a certified mediator. A graduate of Bristol University, UK, London School of Economics and Political Science. Sally is a member of the Board of Governors at St. Andrews Turi, a board director of uh, the Help a Child organization, among others. And uh, she's also a member of several professional bodies. I have had the pleasure of working with Sally for very long and I've enjoyed what she's been doing at the Seasoned Woman, which she started and is the founder of, uh, where she brings women together into an interactive space to talk about topical issues through panels, mentorship, coaching, and any other programs. Her vision, of course, is to see an army of seasoned women and men who will raise up and embrace the seasons that they are in. Her work and contributions to seasoned women has been recognized na nationally and internationally, even as late as uh, is it two weeks ago, uh, uh, Every Girl Wins Institute US recognized her for the good work that she's been doing. She's a recipient of the Messenger of Hope Award from the I Change Nations Organization of the USA. Sally is an international motivational speaker, a seasoned, passionate, and I know that for sure, inspirational mentor, certified professional coach, and a minister on various aspects such as relationships, marriage, life, skills, career, spiritual, calling, purpose, destiny, everything within the church sphere and the marketplace. You guys are in the best hands possible. She is a publisher and an author of seven books, and she will talk about it at the end of that. Besides all this, and I always wonder how she does it, she is married and blessed with two children. So if you want to know how to juggle your seasons, she's also the person to go to. So Sally, we salute you and we welcome you today for an engaging season. We really look forward uh, to, to hearing what you have for us today. Asante sana and welcome everybody. Have a good time. You can introduce yourself and what you do on the chat. And um, Karibu sana. Sally, over to you. Very good. Thank you, Rose, for that. Thank you for the invitation, first of all, Rose. Thank you for that generous introduction. And as I keep telling you, Rose, I could do this all day. I love doing this, so I enjoy it. And it's my pleasure again to be with your team. And I understand the kakas are in the house, are they? Uh, yes, they are. So today we are all there. It is well, open also. Kakas. To, it is open to our customers also, uh, our dadas and kakas. So whoever wanted to listen to this, we, we allowed them to come in. Sally? Lillian, can you hear me and can you hear Sally? Good morning, Rose, I can hear you well. Um, Sally, Sally should have... Um, We've lost her. Sally. She's not on. Yeah, no, yeah, you can just... get her uh, on phone. Uh, okay. uh, just allow us to get her back online, is in a technology, so... Uh, we are not in control. In the meanwhile, Samuel, maybe you can play for us, Bridget, just to keep our spirits high while I find Sally. Thank you. Meanwhile, Lillian, you can post our contacts there in case should anybody want to get in touch with us, let them have our contacts. We are always ready to receive you, to welcome you at this big bank uh, called Stanbic. We have something for everyone and we believe in our motto that it can be. We're a nation of Believing in our dreams. To Kiami ni sote, to Tafani Kiwa, no to Zetu sote, Zita Kuja Kuwa. Hatuakwa, hatuwa. 
Super Sally, welcome back. Paul. Yes, thank you, Rose. <laughs> oh, it was on your side. I thought it was on my side. Yeah. Oh, we've been waiting for you. Oh, oh I thought it was. A, I think I was thrown out. I don't understand. Oh. But let me continue. Let me save time, Rose. So uh, congratulations on Women's International Day of Women. And as I just said earlier, is that it's a day we can celebrate for long and long and long because it's significant. My topic today was how to win over yourself. Very interesting topic because a lot of times it's not so much um, a race against others when we're going to, uh, when we're progressing in our success in the corporate world to destiny, whatever your area of influence is, is often the, the, the race against ourselves. It's often the internal enemies, not the external enemies that hinder us from getting to where we need to get to. And I strongly believe that once we have overcome those internal enemies, those hindrances within ourselves, um, then the external enemies are a piece of cake. We can win over that. So the topic is winning over ourselves. And I'm going to address seasoning your emotions and mindset. And I specifically wanted to address the emotions and mindset because I believe those are the specific areas in us, the aspects and elements in us that often sabotage us, that often derail us. Because they're subtle things and we have to master the art of controlling and managing those uh, emotions and mindsets. Now, let me just define what we mean. Mindset won't get very complicated. When we're talking of mindset, we're talking of your thought patterns. We're talking of how you think, how you, uh, what thoughts you allow to come into your mind, which ones you sieve, your ability and capacity to sieve and retain only those thoughts that will be productive and useful for you, and an ability to let go of the ones that are not good for you. So we talk of a mindset in terms of thought pattern. We talk of a negative mindset in thoughts of that. Your thoughts may be so negative, they're actually hindering you from moving on, or they may be positive in terms of motivating you and putting it in and we talk of emotions emotions in terms of your feelings in terms of your behavior patterns in terms of how you posture how you react to situations and these are the two areas that are most dangerous when it comes to uh, to self management as it were and moving on in our journey to success and and destiny so when we talk of seasoning muscle is marinating maturing making something come to a place of being effective and efficient. And being efficient and progressive without hindrances. And when we say we somebody is seasoned, we talk of somebody being basically mature or skilled or effective or efficient in whatever they do. So when we talk of seasoning our emotions and mindset, then we're definitely talking of bringing our mindset and our emotions to a place where they serve us. We master them, they don't master us. We have the capacity to excellently manage them and, 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 and subdue them and bring them to a place where they function for our benefit. Our emotions 
we use them for our benefit. We, we have a thought pattern that benefits us and that's seasoning and it's progressive because it doesn't happen overnight. And the question is, it's, and I can think of several things uh, as follows. One of the reasons we need to season and mature us is because when we don't, then it means that the emotions translate into words. We find ourselves um, uttering hasty words, words that are not carefully thought out. Words can never be taken back. Once you speak, what comes out of your mouth and often what comes out of your mouth comes out of the abundance of your heart, out of your emotions, what you feel. You speak carelessly, hastily, without guarding or, or, or checking those words. And you speak in a manner that is destructive or that works against you and prejudices because they cannot be taken back and they will have the destructive effect there. They'll have a destructive effect or on your life and prejudice you. So one of the things that emotions and mindsets do is they translate into words. What you're thinking often comes out in a statement or in words. So we need to guard our thought pattern, our mindset, our emotions, because it translates into words. Now, our body language, for example, our posture, our demeanor, how we uh, postulate, how we, the demeanor, the countenance often betrays us because it shows if it's anger, if it's of offense, if it's bitterness, whatever negative toxic emotion we are going through or whatever we're thinking will often reflect in our posture and in our body language. So again, we need to guard our emotions and season them and season our mindset to, 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 so that we don't postulate or, 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 or uh, demonstrate a body language that is destructive, that people can read and judge us by the way we postulate and the way we act out and the way we we, we posture ourselves into situations, Some our body language, our, our quick reaction to a situation will often betray us before, because before you can quickly guard yourself and, and, and take hold of those emotions and that mindset and, and act in a way or respond in a manner that is acceptable, your reaction may betray you. So it's very important that we're able to self-manage, manage those emotions so that our reactions, our hasty reactions that are not measured, that are not weighed. The important thing is to measure and weigh our words, measure and weigh our posture, our demeanor and continence, measure and weigh our reactions, because if we don't uh, measure and weigh them, because we measure and weigh them for purposes of assessing the consequences. What are the consequences of the words I've just uttered? What are the consequences of the way I've just reacted to that situation? What are the consequences of, 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 of my posturing or my demeanor? What are the consequences of that? What effect will it have to the viewers and the listeners in terms of whatever I'm trying to promote or advocate for? How will it affect my agenda? How will it affect what I was pursuing? Is it an interview? Is it a negotiation? Is it, is it a, a, an opportunity that I've been given that I'm advancing? How will it affect it? And if we stop to think of the negative consequences, then we'll be, then we'll be careful to guard and measure those words and those reactions. And, 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 and that posture. The other thing is sometimes we make rash choices. When we make rash, hasty choices and decisions, it's always as a result of emotions, unguarded, undisciplined, unmeasured and unweighed emotions and wrong thought patterns where we think something is when it isn't. Because uh, even the Bible says, a man is what he thinks. We are what we think. We reflect what is in our minds out of the abundance of our emotions and heart come out the words we speak. So often we make choices, rash choices and decisions without measuring, without thinking because they are, they are led of our emotions. And what it is, is that sometimes the situation is so temporary. It's a very temporary situation. The circumstances are so temporary, but our emotions betray us, our unguarded and unmanaged emotions and mindsets will betray us into making a permanent choice and a permanent decision on a temporary situation. And that is such a tragedy because those choices and decisions will live with you. They will live to haunt you and reversing them can be 
can take long and sabotage what you're trying to do at that moment. So it's important we guard our choice, our emotions and mindsets so we don't make the wrong choices or hasty choices. We don't break relationships. Relationships are crucial in our walk, in our progress, in our destiny. They are relationships that we, we, we see and discern and, and measure and weigh to be valuable, valuable for our, for our progress, valuable for success, valuable for us to fulfill whatever assignments and, 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 and um, assignments we are, we, and opportunities we're endeavoring to do. And therefore, it is important that we be very careful how we protect protect and guard those relationships. Because when you lose those valuable relationships, those networks, you've spent so long building. You know, we often say that it takes a long time to build the right networks, the right relationships, the right healthy people around you, the right people who will speak in your favor. The, I call them destiny from one place to another. They help you to move from one level of success to another. And those relationships are crucial. You can't afford to keep, uh, um, you can't afford to keep, this, uh, uh, to, to keep breaking those relationships, to keep undermining them, to keep disrespecting them, to keep devaluing them. You need to be careful. But if your emotions and your mindset is not guarded, when we suffer from what they call this, a distortive cognitive distortion when you think something is when it is not you look at someone and you imagine that they're demeaning you or they're humiliating you you misunderstand them you misconstrue their their words or their actions towards you then it means that you end up breaking that relationship uh, damaging that relationship which is valuable and which you need which you need for where you're going so that's what emotion wrong emotions toxic emotions Toxic mindsets can do if you do not season them, manage them, and mature them to be effective and to work in your favor. Or when you allow them to master you instead of you mastering them. Or when you reach conclusions without adequate information or misinformation. You make decisions hastily, you don't have enough information, or you have disinformation, and you make a choice which is permanent. And you, and, you, and you judge somebody, you critique a relationship, or you, you critically rule it out, or you, sub, you, you, you break a relationship or a situation, or you walk out of a job, or you walk out of an opportunity carelessly because you misunderstood it, because you didn't have enough information to make your decision and your choice. Then the other thing, and this is the most critical, is self-sabotage. Emotions and wrong mindsets lead us into self-destructive, patterns of behavior, where we end up self-sabotaging, where we end up um, a, a, a walking in victim syndrome. We imagine things that are not there or we, or we limit ourselves, some self-limiting patterns of behavior where we, we feel we're not capable of something, we can't do this, or imposter syndrome, or where we feel um, uh, people are judging us when they are not. And self-sabotage, is a very, very, very serious dysfunction that is caused by unchecked emotions and unchecked mindsets. And there's a story about the frog and the scorpion. And I don't know whether I've shared it on this platform. It is where destructive pattern of behavior or a nature in us that we have been completely unable to master or bring under control and under discipline that rears its ugly head whenever we're in a situation of benefit or advantage and we mess it up, we prejudice ourselves. So this story of the frog and the scorpion goes like this. The frog and the scorpion were at the edge of a river. Now the scorpion can't swim, it will drown. It, it's not good in water. So, but the frog is an excellent swimmer. And this was a deep, 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 deep uh, river. And the scorpion was fearful that it might not have the strength to get across to the other side of the river. So it says to the frog, Please let carry me on your back and take me across to the other side of the river. And the frog says to the scorpion, I know you so well. I know your behavior. I know your nature. And I know you're going to sting me. What if you sting me when we are already in the river swimming across and you're on my back and then we both drown? You know, what guarantee do I have that you're not going to sting me and, and, and prick me and, and kill me and then we both drown? And the Scorpio says, come on, how foolish would I be? How crazy would I be to, to, to start to sting you 
or, or when, uh, when I'm on your back, I'll also drown. I mean, surely that's crazy. That's ridiculous. Why would I do it? And the frog listens and says, yeah, that's a point. Maybe, surely, why would you do it when you know we're both going to drown? So he agrees to carry the scorpion and swim nicely. And they come to the middle of the river, to the deepest part of the river. And as it is its nature, the destructive, dysfunctional nature of a scorpion, it stings the frog right in the middle of the river. And it stings the frog. And as it stings the frog, and the frog begins to, to, to drown, he says to the scorpion, what's wrong with you? I mean, come on. We're both going to drown. We're now both going to drown. Uh, and you told me that you understand that if you sting me, we'll both drown. Why would you do that? And the scorpion almost sadly and regretfully says, I don't know. It's my nature. I can't help it. What's my point? That story demonstrates what is in you and I sometimes. There's a, a way of behavior, a way we, we, we deal with relationships, a way we deal with opportunities that come into our lives, a way we deal with situations or crisis situations that is destructive, that is not managed, that is full of toxic emotions, that is ruled and geared and driven by toxic emotions and wrong mindsets and wrong thought patterns. So we self sabotaging like the scorpion. We end up drowning because we did something that deep down we know is destructive, but you can't help yourself. You're in a conversation and you know, and, and a conversation is going on and you know that it is to your benefit to shut up, listen, and, and make sure you lay hold of that opportunity being given to you. But there's a nature in you that forces you or causes you to speak Careless words, idle words, make a comment that is so uh, foolish or idle that ends up jeopardizing that entire conversation. It ends up causing the entire body to criticize you and to write you off if it were. They write you off because you spoke out of turn, you spoke carelessly, you misspoke, you, you, you spoke out of context, you, you, you maybe get, uh, you spoke a dirty joke in the wrong context, whatever it might be or you behaved in a manner that was so wrong and toxic because of your emotions, or you allowed anger or offense or past pain. Normally these things arise out of past pain, past woundedness, offense, unforgiveness. Emotions always rear the ugly heads, toxic emotions, because there's an underlying factor. Victim syndromes come up because Along the way in our lives, we've suffered rejection, we've been offended, we've been hurt and wounded, we've failed, we've, we've encountered disappointments that have wounded us, and we've been, we haven't yet healed. We haven't healed from those disappointments. We haven't healed from those uh, offenses and bitternesses and angers. We haven't dealt with those toxic emotions. When we don't feel, when we haven't dealt with those toxic feelings, it means they project themselves at the wrong time. They come just when you really can't afford them to rear their ugly heads. The scorpion had not mastered its stinging dysfunction. It's, it's desire to sting, to hurt. In fact, if you translate it and the symbolism of a scorpion sting is speak hastily hurtful words, words that pierce and they hurt other people so badly. They criticize, they condemn, they are so disrespectful and offensive. And we're in a room and we're talking and you just can't help yourself, but you come up with a very toxic comment. Maybe you speak nastily about the poor, about the sick, about street people, about a particular tribe or race, you know, or agenda. Something comes out of you that is so ugly and so toxic, just like a scorpion's sting. And right there, right there, you sabotage yourself. You self-sabotage. And it's so important we don't become like scorpions and we must guard, we must look at it. So I come to my next section of this, having told you what is it about our toxic emotions? What causes them? And what effect do they have on our progress, our success, our relationships, our opportunities, that negative way and the wrong mindsets and everything when we allow and we come to a place when we now talk of how do we season? How do we mature those emotions? How do we deal with them? How do we manage them? How do we eradicate? How do we purge? 
Purge is a very strong word. Purging literally means sanctify those emotions, sanctify your mindset, concentrate it, if it were. Let's use very strong language on ourselves so we get the point, so that you cleanse, you scrape off what is wrong with that emotion, you eradicate them, you, 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 you mold them so that it's the right positive emotions. Now we can't say uh, that we'll never have emotions. These emotions will come and emotions are necessary. Otherwise we would not be living, living beings if we didn't have emotions. So there are emotions that are positive, happiness, joy, forgiveness, love. There are emotions and even mindsets that are fantastic, a proper healthy positive mindset. Uh, and what we do when these uh, proper mindsets and proper emotions are then uh, covered up with dirt and toxin of anger, We have to deal with them. We have to scrape off the dirt. Share with you, and one of and I'm going to talk of three spices. Three spices that will help you season your toxic emotions and your toxic mindset. Your wrong emotions, wrong mindsets, negative emotions, negative mindsets to bring them into alignment, into a healthy place, into a place where you can they're healthy and you master them and you can, op you can use them to serve your purposes and help you progress and succeed. And one of the, uh, one of the, uh, one of the uh, spices is salt. Salt is a spice. And, 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 and in the natural, salt uh, uh, makes, turns bland food, food that is so unpalatable, so tasteless and so useless. It, it, salt is able to make it palatable edible, make it tasteful, uh, matured and cooked and palatable and enjoyable and presentable. So likewise, symbolically, when you use salt, uh, salt in your, on your emotions and your, on your wrong emotions, on your raw emotions, on unmeasured, and they're still raw and ugly and useless and unpalatable. When you use salt on those emotions, then you it has the effect of turning those ugly emotions and ugly mindsets and ugly thought pattern into palatable, edible, presentable. Is salt stands and symbolizes truth. In the Bible, it talks of the salt of the earth. We are the truth. Salt has always been used to symbolize universally truth. When you apply truth, you apply salt to your emotions and your wrong mindset. It means that you are radically using truth to confront your emotions. You cannot deny when you're feeling angry. You cannot deny feeling jealous and envious and bitter and, and unforgiveness. So the first seasoning with salt is acknowledge your ugly emotions acknowledge them do not try to deny them do not try to pretend you're not angry or jealous do not try to act that those emotions are not there do not ignore them you ignore ugly emotions and ugly mindsets at your own peril they cannot be ignored they're very powerful and they're very toxic and if you try to ignore them they'll push their way through and and in the boardroom you're sitting there instead of managing them, instead of using uh, 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 your affirmations, your positive declarations within your heart in a room, you, 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 you're there denying and pretending you're not feeling offended by what the chairman has said. You should be working at tempering them within yourself and saying, I will not speak out of turn. I will not be rude to the chairman. I'm not gonna criticize this tribe. I'm not gonna do this. So you should be working on yourself in the inside. But in but when you add, use truth, when you use truth, when you use salt, when you acknowledge I'm feeling this, there's an ugly emotion in me right now, and I'm about to say something very ugly about this tribe, but I dare not because you've acknowledged that that ugly emotion is there, that ugly feeling is there, that ugly offense is there. And once you acknowledge something, you are then able to deal with it because you cannot confront or deal with something that you have not acknowledged exists. You must acknowledge you have a tribal sentiment, you have a racial bias, you have a gender bias, and so that you can deal with it, because if you don't acknowledge it, so you must acknowledge those wrong emotions, otherwise they will ambush you. And this is what we talk of being self-aware. 
You're self-aware. You're critically self-aware of your emotions. You know at any particular point, minute or second, what you're feeling. You can analyze your feelings. You can assess. You can never deal with something that you have not confronted or acknowledged exists. And if you don't, these emotions are very powerful. They're very ugly and they're out to sabotage you. They're out to ruin you. So they'll ambush you when you're unaware. So self-awareness is critical when you already know, when you know what you're dealing with and when you know what you're confronting. So salt, the truth, confront them with truth. Salt is also known symbolically heal. When you have a wound, uh, we use salt to, to put on the wound, to put on the raw emotions. So what happens is salt, the truth. When you apply truth to an ugly emotion and you acknowledge it and you allow those around you to point out and tell you, Sally, there's offense within you, please deal with it. Sally, there's a tribal bias. There's a gender bias, please deal with it. When you allow truth to be applied to your ugly emotions, then that truth will heal those emotions because it will, it will open them up, expose them when they're hidden. Because sometimes subconsciously, we may not even actually know, know that. Subconsciously, we may not know we're feeling offended by someone because we've mastered the art of covering up those emotions so much. But it is important to allow yourself for someone to speak the truth and tell you you're offended. You're behaving like one of the one ugly or one with a tribal gender bias or racial bias. Please change your attitude, change your emotion. So it's very important because salt heals. It heals wounds. It heals unforgiveness. It heals offense. So salt symbolizes truth. Season your ugly emotions with salt, with truth, so that the truth will set you free. The truth will heal those emotions. The truth will align your toxic mindset. The truth will align your wrong wayward mindset and thought pattern and align it in the proper way. If it's a fixated mindset that refuses to be flexible, that only thinks in a certain way and it's destructive, truth will enable you to be flexible, to begin to see things in another way. It doesn't have to be always your way. It doesn't have to be what you think. You can allow, you can exit, you can oust, you can expel, you can reject wrong mindsets, wrong thoughts. There's a saying that birds, can, you can't stop the birds from flying over, flying over your head, but you can stop them from landing on your head. You can stop those birds landing on your head. So whatever thoughts come, you're able to judge them immediately. You have a, you have a plan of not even allowing them to enter your mind. You stop those thoughts, you arrest them, you cast them out, you subdue them, you bring them down. So that's the first way of seasoning your wrong emotions and your wrong mindsets by applying salt, the spice salt, which stands for truth and awareness, self-awareness. The other thing is, you use garlic. Garlic is a very strong emo spice. It is powerful. It is strong. It makes a dish turn from being almost also tasteless and not very nice. And it makes it tasty. Garlic is so universal. Every nationality from the Europeans to the Americans to the Japanese to the Chinese use garlic to the Africans. We all use garlic when we're seasoning our food. And garlic is a very popular and a very strong spice. It spices the food in a very strong, it spices it, it's, it symbolizes strength. It is very strong. In fact, when garlic is too strong, it can be offensive. So it's a strength that is powerful. And when you apply garlic or strength, the symbolism of garlic is strength. So you season your ugly wrong emotions and ugly wrong mindsets with the spice garlic, which stands for strength, courage, and boldness. And you have the power to subdue and submit 
to the bigger agenda. Let me explain this because it's very, very important. Whenever your, your, your emotions rear their ugly heads, your, the, the toxic emotions and mindsets, and you're in a situation, you must have the strength. You must use your garlic. You must use your strength, your inner resolve and resilience, your inner strength and tenacity to subdue those emotions, subdue those thoughts to a bigger agenda. You say to yourself, Yenyewe I'm vying to be governor. That's a bigger goal, that's a bigger picture. I am looking to climb the corporate ladder to be the general manager of Stanbic, to be even the biggest shareholder in Stanbic, the best ICC lawyer. Whatever it is you're heading towards, you say to yourself, that's my bigger goal. And if I allow this emotion I'm sensing inside me right now to rear its ugly head in this situation, I will miss the bigger goal and the bigger picture. So your garlic and your strength spice, your garlic spice, which is your strength and your tenacity and your resilience will subdue that emotion and crush it. You will crush that ugly thought. You will crush it. It will not even know what hit it. It's like how you swat the fly against the wall or you, a mosquito is coming around you and you hit the mosquito before it comes zing around you. Those thoughts are like mosquitoes. You reject it, you subdue it, you bring it into submission and you tell it, you spirit of offense. You're not going to sabotage my bid for governorship. You're not going to subdue my bid for general managership. You're not going to interfere with this moment. I subdue you, I submit you, I bring you into subjection. And, you, and that requires a lot of strength, strength of character strength of character it requires tenacity it requires a single-minded focus on your goals and your visions and your dreams so that the dream i'm pursuing the goal i'm pursuing is so important to me that i, I have built up the strength the resolve and the tenacity and the resilience within me to subdue any ugly emotion or any wrong mindset like my dare to come and interfere with where i'm headed and that's the second spice of garlic strength, the strength to subdue, to force. It's a very strong, you have to subdue. You have a long-term plan and you're not allowed to, you're not about to allow a short-term emotion, ugly emotion or a short-term uh, mindset, wrong mindset to term and interfere with your long-term goals, your success and your progress. So that power to look at the bigger goal, that capacity to focus on the bigger goal and to speak to your emotions, to speak to your mindset, and to subdue them and to master them, master them. They mustn't be the ones mastering you. It is you mastering them. And you must master them, subdue them, and tell the emotion, you know, I'm still dealing with you. Yes, I'm aware. I acknowledge I have an anger issue. I acknowledge I have a tribal bias. I acknowledge I have a jealousy, but and I'm dealing with you progressively, but you're not going to interfere with this moment. I subdue you and I force you into subjection so that I don't abort the purposes that I'm pursuing and the goals and the dreams and the opportunities. And the third spice that you use to manage your emotions, wrong, ugly emotions and ugly mindset is cinnamon. Cinnamon is a beautiful, beautiful spice. It's a tasteful spice. It balances. It has a balancing effect when it's applied. Often it's applied to desserts, even to some soups and desserts and some foods that makes it, uh, even in bread and in other foods, it makes it, it, it brings a balance to the soberness, a reasonableness. And it symbolizes reason. It symbolizes pleasantness. It symbolizes positiveness. It symbolizes the ability to replace the bad with the good. Where you have seasoned with salt, you have acknowledged the truth that yes, you have those emotions. You have taken the second spice, which is garlic. You've applied strength within you to subdue and force those things uh, under control. And so that the, uh, in terms of the bigger picture, and then you've now started turning and it takes time, it's progressive. The cinnamon spice is something you'll apply 
apply progressively to your emotions. You will read the right materials. You will meditate on the right positive thoughts. You surround yourself with the right people. You'll be able to speak to yourself, to your spirit, to your mind, to come to, to, to confront and, and, and fight against anger issues, fight against bias, tribalism, racism, fight against jealousies and envies, fight against unforgiveness. You, are, you, you research, you look for the tools, you go for therapy, you allow people to speak into your life, you self-teach, self-therapy, self-coach, self-mentor. You allow every tool, every cinnamon, every good thing around you every powerful tool that you can use to counter these wrong emotions and these wrong mindsets so that you come into a place where you're a healthy, wholesome person. You have healthy thought pattern. You know how to reject wrong thoughts. The minute the wrong thought comes, you bring your cinnamon spice and you say, I choose to think right thoughts. I choose to harbor the right positive thoughts. I choose when a thought comes to tell you that you're useless, you're not capable of rising to these positions. You can't fulfill that assignment. You suddenly speak to yourself and you say, no, I reject that ugly thought, that negative thought. I decree that I'm able, I'm well able, I am skilled, I am chosen. This is my season. This is my opportunity. I have what it takes to pursue it and lay claim on it. I will pass that interview. I have studied for it. I've researched for it. So then the emotion you say, I choose not to be an unforgiving person. I choose to forgive because it's for my good. I refuse to walk around with ugly toxins in myself, in my heart, in my emotions. I choose to not speak ugly words. My mouth is for speaking blessings, not for cursing. It is for edifying, for encouraging, and it is for lifting up. It is for speaking positive. It is for teaching. It is for glorifying things. It is not for destroying and hurting and wounding and self-limiting and self-effacing words, self-negative negative words, self-talk. So you quickly, every day you apply cinnamon, apply cinnamon spice, apply cinnamon spice to your emotions, to your mindset, to your thought pattern. And that way you replace, you gradually mature, you gradually begin to mature your emotions and mindset. You gradually bring them into subjection. You gradually come to a place where you, you sincerely feel you're stronger, you're able to control your thought pattern, control your emotions. You're a self-controlled, disciplined person. You're not self-sabotaging. You're not being a scorpion. You're walking healthily. You're walking healthily. And what happens during those times what is happening as you're applying the cinnamon spice? You're doing what I call undergoing radical surgery. In one of my books, all what I'm speaking about is in my books, in, my seven, in, one, in, in the seven books I've written. And in one of those books I've written extensively on undergoing radical surgery. If your heart, if for example, in the physical, I have a heart disease, for example, personally and truthfully and realistically, I, Sally, uh, have a heart disease. And once I, I, a few years ago, I underwent a triple heart bypass. And what had happened in the physical, a lot of cholesterol or toxins had clogged my arteries. They had clogged the veins and the pipes that take oxygen and blood in and out of my, my heart. So I, my heart was getting diseased and damaged and I was about to have a heart attack. And that leads to paralysis and, and, and dysfunction and disability or even death. But we discovered it right on time. And I went and had the surgery, a radical surgery, invasive surgery, where the clogging was scraped out. It was a triple heart bypass. I was cut through. I was operated on, it was a surgery, I was scraped, all the toxins, all that bad cholesterol was removed so that my arteries were cleansed. And I was then put on medication and on a treatment program that would enable me not to have that clogging again. And I was then told, don't eat this, don't take this into your body because it will clog again. What am I saying? Symbolically, when we are walking with bad emotions, anger, toxins, unforgiveness, bitterness, offense. We have a heart disease. Symbolically, our emotions are sick. 
they are sick and you need to submit yourself to a symbolically a radical surgery radical therapy radical mental coaching where you allow yourself to be spoken to or even reading self-help inspirational books that will radically point to your dysfunction and your disease and then you allow that radical cleansing that radical removing of what is clogging your arteries the hate the racialism the tribalism the jealousies the offenses the woundedness from your past the disappointments the past failures that make you so hard-hearted and cynical you become so cynical and critical you, you hate everybody you're judging everybody's success you, you're sabotaging your relationships because you're so cynical so what in the symbolic it does uh, like in the physical they cleaned me up the, in the symbolically you get cleansed you allow yourself to go through seasons of cleansing, cleansing. And every time I eat there, or even up to today, every time I eat what I was told not to eat, I, I, got, I quickly say to myself, Sally, you're gonna build up the bad cholesterol. So symbolically, you say to yourself, every time you want to get angry, you get to get jealous and envious and, 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 and biased. You remind yourself, oops, I better not allow that emotion into me because, because I'm going to clog my system again, and I'm going to head towards heart failure. I'm going to head towards death. Death symbolically is death of your visions, death for your dreams, death of your career, the death to your relationships, death to your opportunities, death symbolically. In the physical, it is death. Kufa kabisa, we bury you. But in the symbolically, when you get heart failure symbolically because of toxic emotions and wrong mindsets, you basically just die. You die. You don't progress. You don't ever achieve your goals and your dreams. And you come into a place of dysfunction and you, you turn out to be nothing. You are a failure. You, you get set back and you cannot pick yourself up again. So it's important you remember that you must allow yourself to go radical surgery, radical surgery of your heart. You go through a heart a heart, sometimes it's a heart transplant when you need to be given a healthier heart because your own heart is so damaged with so with such ugly emotions that you literally need to be to be overhauled like a car engine. When the engine is not operating anymore, you need a new engine. An overhaul. Allow yourself to be radically surg uh, surgery, radical surgery, radically operated on symbolically or using the tools available out there so that you're cleansed and the arteries are clear, your, your systems are clear, your thought pattern is clean and clear and pure, you know, not full of profanity and coarse joking and coarse words. And th they tell us that um, once you're cleansed from all these toxic emotions, it's an unclogging, it's actually unclogging. And that's what, the, that's what the surgery I went through did. It unclogged me, it unclogged me. Now it's often been said that our emotions will drive the decisions we make. And I talked about this earlier, our, emo our emotions, whether good or bad, our mindset or thought patterns, whether good or bad, will drive the decisions and the choices we make today and, and the success we get tomorrow. And they impact greatly, they impact greatly on what we do, how we operate, whether we succeed or fail. And emotions drive our behavior, those behavior patterns of, of, of self-sabotage and self-limiting and self-effacing and, 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 and whatever they are, they actually are driven by our emotions and they're driven and they shape our decisions and our choices. And we end up becoming a slave to ugly emotions, a slave to ugly mindsets, a slave to indulgences. We don't have a discipline. You don't have to overeat. You know, some things you may not say they're they, they wicked, they're wicked per se, but even over watching television, over eating, over talking, you know, you may say there's nothing wrong with that. It's not a sin in the Bible. It's not what, but these things are, are, are emotions that are not very pure. They're, 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 they're not healthy. And at some point they'll have some negative effect on you. And they, in, in, let me put it this way, any emotion that has enslaved you, let's put it that way, that has enslaved you, even if it's a sport, if you're addicted to a sport, you're addicted to a television series, you're addicted to a particular food, you're addicted to something or shopping or whatever it is, that emotion it has made you a slave to it. And you shouldn't allow emotions to enslave you. They are your slaves and you use them for your benefit in the right way and you manage them. And, um, 
And while we can't stop how we feel sometimes, we can save and control those emotions. That's what I'm saying. You can't, sometimes something is, 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 makes you angry. We can't say you're not a human being. A human being will get angry. A human being will feel jealous and envious. So I'm not saying that we should never experience these emotions or even offense or anger or bitterness or disappointment. These are normal and they're human, but how we respond to them, how we deal with them, how we work through them to come to a place which is healthy, guarding and saving and allowing our mindsets to be changed because we are who we think. A, mind, a man is who he thinketh. And the greatest battle is always in our mind. It starts in the mind. Once we win the battle of our mind, we have the right thoughts, the right positive thought pattern. Then we win the battle over every other issue, the physical action in our lives. And that's very important to do that. So in summary, therefore, because I think uh, we will have a few minutes, then we come into question time. What I want to encourage us is to come to a place where you constantly are self-aware. You're constantly self-aware. You're aware of bitternesses and jealousies. You're aware of hurt and woundedness. You're not denying it. You're aware of disappointments. You're aware of selfish agendas, selfish ambitions. You're aware of hatefulness when you're, into, when you're feeling hateful and biased and ugly. And you're able to come to a place to say, I acknowledge these thoughts and these thought patterns and I'm able to change it. With regard to mindsets, there's a, there's a quote by a man called Benjamin Disraeli that says, nurture your mind with great thoughts for you will never go any higher than you think. You will not go any higher than you think. So it's so important to guard and season and manage your thought pattern and your mindset because a healthy mindset will determine, a mindset will determine how high you go or how stagnant you remain. So a healthy, positive mindset will take you as high as you can possibly go. And that once your mindset changes, everything on the outside will change uh, around, along it. This is by Steve Maraboli. He says that once your mindset changes, everything on the outside changes. Once I begin to change my mind about certain tribes and, and embrace them and accommodate and respect them wholesomely, acknowledge that every tribe is here by the design of God, every race and stop bias, every gender and respect the other gender, then the, the, everything around that will change. I'll walk in respect. I'll walk in concern for the welfare of somebody else. I will, when I'm not arrogant with an arrogant mindset, an arrogant emotion, I will not walk around with a don't care attitude towards the, the poor, the sick, the marginalized or, the, or, or women or men, I will walk with a healthy love and concern for their welfare and caring. I'll be a healthier leader. I'll be a healthier employer. I'll be a healthier employee with my team. I'll be able to walk in a way that is healthy and productive, uh, productive that leads to my success and to my progress. And it's very important to do that. Now, things like uh, procrastination, are, are an emotion that is normally caused by the emotion of fear, fear of failure, but sometimes fear of success, because success brings responsibilities that you not, may, may not be ready for, or, or, or you may not want to take on. So procrastination delays our success. It delays our, 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 our destiny. And it's also a negative emotion, and you need to address it and deal with it. And, and even the the... the the emotion of a victim mentality, what I talked about, victim syndrome, where you're constantly seeing yourself as a victim because you're too lazy to arise and take responsibility. A victim, uh, a victim syndrome often is somebody who uses crutches, he uses, oh, they, they rejected me, or this happened to me when I was a little child, I was molested, I was, they refuse to heal. They actually enjoy the victim uh, mentality syndrome. They actually enjoy being there because it's an excuse for not excelling. It's an excuse um, for not uh, applying themselves so that they blame it on other people, never taking responsibility. And that's an ugly emotion that can often cripple your progress. And we need to deal with those emotions and come to a place of accepting that we need to deal with it. Now, let me uh, just emphasize very strongly 
about when we go through the radical surgery of allowing others to speak to us. I think um, it takes maturity. It takes a lot of maturity, a lot of um, character growth, a lot of, um, 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 what can I call it? Humility, humility uh, for you to allow people to correct you. And I think one of the things that causes us to walk so wrong in the wrong way for so long, to get it wrong for so long, is because we're not willing to submit and subject ourselves to relationships around us that will speak into our lives. I speak to the women, and I've spoken to the women in this group about women friendships, pillars in your life. And I spoke about this yesterday, who will help you, who will speak truth. These pillars, these women friends that you've saved over years that walk with you and you walk with them because to the extent that some woman is your salt and your garlic, your truth, she tells you the truth, she, she's your strength, she's your ginger, she's your bodyguard, she's your cinnamon, she brings the positive into you. You're also the same to others. And what happens is that th these kind of strong relationships will point out accountability relationships. You have mentors over you, coaches, you have authorities, even if it's spiritual authority, that will point out things in you that you cannot see because you're blinded by your own toxic emotions and wrong mindsets. So it's important to allow relationships in our lives like ladder holders, people who hold up your ladder for you to climb the corporate ladder. You know, when you're saying we're climbing the corporate ladder, there must be people holding that ladder at the bottom. You cannot climb without helpers, without connectors, without mentors, coaches, without um, encouragers, without people who will correct you, without people who will guide you, rebuke you, you know, defend you, protect you, instill strength in you, who will teach you and train you. And these relationships are crucial because they're like ladder holders. For you to get to where you are today, there were ladder holders. There were people who held the ladder for you to climb up, to climb up that wall of success, to climb up that wall of progress, and to be where your position today, whether it is your parents, your siblings, your, your, your friends, or, 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 or people who went ahead of you, uh, the, the, the role models in your industry, who you consulted from time to time, connectors, people who connected you, people who taught you and trained you. There are people who hold your ladder as you climb up. These are ladder holders. These are ladder holders, people who make it, who connect you from one place to another. And it's important to be in a place of humility, a teachability spirit, a place where you're teachable, you're correctable, you're humble enough to know what's wrong with you. And when you're self-aware, when you're walking in self-awareness, it is very easy to then walk in humility because you can then discern, I have this problem and it needs this kind of relationship or this person in my life to deal with it. And sometimes it's, there's an dada, unaona umefika, ume, you have accomplished, but there's always another level ahead of that. There's always another level that you have to aspire to and, and, and be inspired to aspire, dare to achieve. And therefore you cannot have an arrival mentality. I cannot have an arrival mentality that I've, I've excelled in this area of my life. I've practiced law for 36 years. So I'm at a place where I, I have arrived. I have arrived and I cannot be taught anything. I have to remain teachable. I have to remain acknowledging that there's aspects of the law that I need to still be taught by my seniors. Even some of my juniors, they are fresh out of law school. I hire a lot of, uh, a lot of privileged students, a lot of young lawyers, and they teach me so much. I need to be open for them to teach me because there's something that's been taught in the law school that uh, my mind is rusty. You know, I've practiced for 36 years. They've come up with fresh information. New laws have come up. I may not have had time to sharpen myself and read the new laws. So you must be not allow an arrival mentality, an arrival mentality where you shut yourself completely to any kind of improvement or self-growth or self-development. And that emotion of an arrival mentality comes as a result of arrogance and an unteachable spirit of believing you have reached the top and we need to be very careful. So with those remarks, Rose, I want to wind up there so that we get some comments, we get some uh, questions, if any, and uh, maybe even just
day. Thank you for listening. And I pray that you got something this morning. Thank you, Rose. Wow, Sally. Hey, my friend, eh? this was super powerful. And I have so many comments. I have people from Eldoret, Nakuru, and as far as Ghana and the US. Yeah, so we really, we really welcome you for this session. Let me take some quick uh, questions. There's somebody who is asking. Um, thank you. Uh, can you change temperament? Wow. Can you change temperament? And if not, how do you deal with those temperamental disorders? And then uh, the second one, do you want me to take the second or you want to deal one one? Sally? Sally, can you hear me? Take, uh, let's go with all of Okay. Uh, I think we've lost her briefly, someone. Uh, super, I think we, uh, while she's getting back, she'll be back with us in a minute. Uh, maybe she's having network issues. We just want to welcome you to Stambik uh, Bank. Should you feel you want to get in touch with us because this is what we do at Dada. We have sessions which we arrange for both Dadas and Kakas. And uh, we thought this was very useful and we opened it to everybody. So I'm very happy to see that some kakas joined us. Please, if you have an account with us and you're a dada, as in wewe ni dada, sister, feel free to, to tell us to code your account so that you're part of the dada community. This is just a bit of what we do. We have so much more in store. The other day, I think you saw we had Judith Ongori uh, taking us through succession and marriage. And uh, we have so much more coming. At the end of this month on 30th, we will have it. We'll be having Catherine Masakali, Musakali of uh, the Women on Boards, and she'll be talking to us on leadership. So please uh, look out for that uh, link and uh, join us then. In the meanwhile, Sally will be back. Just give her a few minutes. I'm sure she, she's looking for a way of uh, joining us again. Someone? Uh, allow me to invite my colleague Lillian, uh, Lillian, our head of sales at Dada. Maybe she can say something. Lillian? Thank you, Rosen. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I think um, I'm excited today seeing the comments that have come through. To just be fair enough to maybe read one or two. I see Rita saying, wow, 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 mind blowing. Um, Deborah says, very powerful conversation, you have spoken to me, and she asks that God may help her to master her emotions. You've got it within you. Give it a shot, Deborah. We've got Pauline saying um, she wants subduing ugly emotions, uh, really does require strength and courage, and yes, it does. I think Sally has alluded that it does require a lot of strength and courage. Ruth says it's a timely conversation that she must have with herself. Um, here at Stanvik, we call them honest, candid conversations. So I truly hope that you'll find some time to, to just sit back and have that conversation with yourself. Charity says it's a wholesome conversation. Leah says it's overhaul therapy, self-therapy, and it's timely. And then we've got Felix saying what a wonderful and uplifting uh, presentation. Um, I mean, I, I think I could only say that my heart is full this morning, Rose, just seeing the comments that are coming through and the ladies appreciating um, the conversation. As a person, I've also learned a lot. Um, so allow me to throw it back to you. Thank you. Uh, can you share our contacts? Have you shared our contacts and say in case somebody wants to get in touch with us just to be part of this community, then uh, they can. Uh, I've just talked to Sally. She'll be in in a minute just to answer some of those uh, key questions that we've received, which are quite uh, deep. And I'm also curious uh, to know the answers. There's this one, whether you can change your temperament and if not, how do you deal with those temperamental disorders? We have, how can you deal with emotional instability and social phobia? Uh, social phobia, interesting. Uh, uh, my question is, if you work with an organization where the bosses 
uh, huh? help you grow and you're not able to practice? Is it help you grow or do not help you grow? Uh, maybe the person can rephrase the question. Um, uh, Sally will be back. Ah, super, Sally. Karibu. You're on mute. The temperament, mm. the temperament can be changed. Yes. The second one is about social phobia. Yeah, the second one is how can we how can how can we deal with emotional instability and social phobia? Mm -hmm. And uh, there was one more. I think uh, let's speak on those first. Let's as do those. We go on. Two, yes. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> oh wait, wait, wait. There's yeah, there's okay. one. There's one. Yeah. How yeah. do you deal with the feeling of stagnation? You mm -hmm. work so hard, but the results aren't matching the work you've put in. Mm. Uh, if you have to consult your boss for everything, are you really growing? Okay, a good one. Also, <laughs> so hard work. Okay, uh, consulting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, kindly share the marriage session. Okay, this is somebody asking. For. Okay, so let's deal with those ones. All right. Thank you, Rose. Sorry okay. about falling off. Now, temperament. Temperament is exactly what we're speaking about. It's about your temperament, your 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 emotion, or your manner of behaving or feeling that projects itself in situations. And what it is, is yes, it can be changed. And that's what we've spoken about uh, just now. It can be changed. I believe uh, that uh, with the most important thing is understanding that there's something wrong with your temperament. That's uh, success number one. Once you've, you're self-aware and acknowledge that I have a temperament and there's something not quite right with it, it's working against me. That's number one, you're aware of it, that's 20% success. Then you go to the next stage and saying, how can it be dealt with? Who do I need to go to? What tools do I need to address it and confront it and deal with it? And that's what I said that um, we are now in an age, even in a place like Kenya or Africa, where we are embracing therapy, we're embracing counseling, we're embracing mentorship and coaching. There were times in our, a long time ago, parents didn't want to hear that their child is going for therapy or nobody went for therapy, nobody went for counseling, nobody went for, 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 for mentorship or coaching. But you must see someone, you must um, look for help, look, acknowledge you have help, find out who who deals with that these days when i open my computer online there's so many people offering offering this last night i opened a, a site where i saw there's mucho there's a lady called mucha mlingo i don't know whether you know her she's a a, a powerful powerful lady who does uh, talks yeah she was advertising and I said, I must enroll on in her program. She was advertising about dealing with emotions. How can you be helped to master your emotions, to deal with, there are people with programs. There are people who deal with relationship issues. So the help is out there. Go for help, go for help, get help and find out who can help you work out those emotions, get the right temperament, etc. cetera. Social phobia, emotional instability, the same thing. It's emotion, ugly emotions. One day you are yo-yo, you are, you, are, you, are, you are psycho, you are psycho in a very sensitive way because there is psycho, which is a, ment a, a mental illness, but I'm just using it in a light sense to say, you're hot and cold, instability. Today you are talking to us, tomorrow you're not talking to us. I, I've come a long way in dealing with emotions. I remember many years ago, the girls in my church, the younger girls I used to mentor would say, hey, Auntie Sally, is, Auntie Sally is nice today, tomorrow she's not talking to you. Those are and in balance, you know, and I had to deal with that. I had to get help. I had to acknowledge it. It helps to hear people say that so that you know there's a problem. And again, you need to get help. You need to find out how can I address my social phobia? This may be fear of being in a social place, inability to communicate effectively and pleasantly. There are people who, who pick up a microphone, even in a wedding or in a child baptism, in a funeral and the words that will come out of that uncle's mouth are so toxic, but he can't help it. He, 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 he doesn't know how to talk. There are people who don't know which words are acceptable in public and which ones are not because their emotions are not tempered, they're not seasoned. So you need to be able to get help. We, are, we have so much ahead of us. We have such um, uh, powerful goals to accomplish and visions to fulfill and destinies and successes and ladders to climb for us 
to remain stagnant in one place with wrong emotions. Get help. Get somebody to help you go for coaching and mentoring and get those things sorted out. The fact that you know you have a problem is success number one. The rest is a piece of cake. You just get help, get the tools and follow how the, and follow the treatment. Follow, I follow the treatment. What wasn't I supposed to eat for my heart disease? Symbolically, follow the treatment. What should you avoid? What, should, what kind of people should you avoid? Maybe they're triggering you into certain behavior. What kind of um, situations? How do you forgive? You need to get that. And I know spiritual help is also important in churches. When people have these issues, it helps. There's spiritual help, there's therapy, there's mentoring and everything. Now, stagnant, I like that question because it is so common that we are working so hard, but we're not showing anything for it. You're not progressing, you're stagnant, you're stuck in your career. You're the same level you're at. Now, this is so common to so many people and it's very painful, very disappointing, and it's, it can make you give up. Now, you need to uh, um, analyze, um, and, and again, let me go back, get help, get a coach, get a mentor, get somebody, tell them, I wake up at this hour, I jog from six to what, I come back, I sort out my home, I go to work, I put in this amount of hours in work, I fulfill my assignments, I do this, and I'm still not moving in my career. Get somebody to probe it. It's fast. Sometimes you release and vent and you share your, what you do, break it down to somebody else who is not you and they listen to you critically. I listen, ah, uh -huh, uh -huh. and what do you do when you reach here? How do you, do you ever go to research and find out what your boss wanted, or do you just give the minimum? Do you do you bother to attend courses and 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 when you see something advertised, do you go to attend it and get polished in that area? So you slowly point out to the person that's why you're stagnant. Others are growing; they're going for self-help classes. They are reading a book a month. They are reading self-help books. They are attending coaching classes. They are doing this. They are improving themselves because you cannot succeed when you're still stagnant. I cannot succeed in my legal profession if I'm not up to date, if I'm not constantly attending the continuous legal seminars, if I'm not improving, I'm not reading legal journals, if I'm not joining the Commonwealth Law Association to improve myself. So sometimes stagnation. Uh, Lillian, have we lost? Uh, yes, yes, I'm not able to my get side. back to my end. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, but we see a lot of comments. How do you deal with fear? We see people asking how to join the bank. Others saying it is very informative. We really thank you. Uh, Billy, uh, getting help nowadays is not that easy unless you provide a link. I think you can also get in touch with Sally. We've put her link there and uh, she knows she's quite informative. She'll be able to, to guide you accordingly. I see somebody has uh, put in Mucha Milingo, Mulingo's number there. Uh, she's also a very powerful speaker and maybe one of these days we'll have her on the forum, Lillian. Um, great session. Um, uh, some of these questions, uh, um, if one gets committed to do beyond her or his level, oh, ah, you're back. <laughs> I think just do uh, Sally. Yeah, Sally, do uh, as you do your parting shot. Yeah, I think something very important. Somebody is saying getting uh, counseling is a bit uh, difficult. Mm. So if they could also get the share a link where they can go to, or maybe uh, also touch on that. Uh, mm. there, are, there are students here also who are self-sabotaging. They're excellent students in school, oh. but life oh. afterwards happened and they have not accomplished much, mm. no meaningful jobs. They feel stuck. Mm. Uh, others are asking about colleagues, bullies in the office. 
how to mm. deal with people who don't pull their weight and you're stuck with them in the office. Mm. Uh, so as you wrap up and um, uh, after mm. you, I'll just ask Lillian to give us a vote of thanks. Uh, mm. uh, we, we, we just touch on a few of those things. Yes. And maybe the key things that, that you want them to, to just take home. Take Thank home with them much. today. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Uh, the over consulting, lady, person who asked about over consulting. Yes, if you're over consulting, then you're not growing, sweetie. You're not growing. You need to not over consult. It reaches a point where you're supposed to be. I see people applying for jobs and saying able to work and supervised. That is a, a plus and an advantage. So when you're still over consulting, unless you're being micromanaged by the boss and you're not being able to expand your horizons and be able to, 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 to operate freely, then surely you shouldn't be over consulting. Now, my parting shots, Rose, are everything. I've spoken and I've been speaking over the weeks with your group are things already in my books. They're all covered in my seven books. I've dealt, what I give you on these webinars are a tip of the iceberg. The detailed teachings are inside my seven books. And of course, I've said before, we have mentorship classes here. We have group sessions. We even have classes going on on how to deal with emotions and mindsets. We have about parenting, about marriage, singlehood. We even have career talks about how to progress in your career, how to deal with toxic people in a workplace, people who bully you, people who undermine you, workplace relationships. All these books, I deal with all those issues in these books. And once again, the books are available at the Season Women's Center. We deliver once you buy. And I believe Rose has all my details uh, as to how you can reach us, call us, email us, and join our Facebook page, our, web, our Twitter, Instagram website. And, and um, what I would say is that it's about, it's about learning. It's about learning. You have to be constantly self-developing. You have to uh, learn and study what you don't know. I study what I don't know. I had seasons in my life when I studied about anger management. How can I stop being impatient and angry and stop self-sabotaging myself? I, I, I took initiative. So you must take initiative to learn and, and to seek. And there is, I don't know, there is so much available online and uh, online in or even by reference in terms of who to go to and who can help you. I don't think there's a limit on the tools available and, and the, the service providers and people out there offering their services to deal with these issues. In fact, there's a time I said, the market is flooded with all these teachings and all these seminars and all these sessions on how to improve yourself. So my last um, is to say, please purchase my books. They will speak to you beyond what I've spoken. They cover all these topics. They are available, 1,500 each book. It's definitely worth more than that because it's got so much content and you will be blessed. Join our mentorship classes. Call us and find out what are the mentorship classes, the seven Ps to your destiny, the seven Ps to climbing your destiny, to climbing the corporate ladder. We have so many uh, modules and programs that can really either individually or in groups that can help you. So please do get in touch with us. And I think that's it, Rose. That's it, Rose. As usual. Thank you very much. Our phone numbers, Sally's. This is how we do it here at Dada by Stambik. We welcome everybody, the Kakas also to Stambik Bank. There is so much in store for you. Please make sure on 30th you join us. Sally, we can't thank you enough. Thank you. I, we can't thank you enough for this thank session. We continue so to walk this journey. Thank you. If you go to the chat, there is so much going on in there. Just a lot of uh, eye-opening moments for everybody. So we do welcome you all to uh, uh, to Dada and to something. Do you want to give us our parting shot, please? Rose, did you call me out? Yes, I said if you can just give a vote of thanks. All right, thank you. Sorry, the network is a bit intermittent where I am. But ladies and gentlemen, what a pleasure again to have you this morning. To our speaker, Dada Salim Mahihu, <laughs> as always, phenomenal. You speak wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. We can never say thank you enough. If you're a dada, I have posted our contacts on the chat, our email addresses, our telephone numbers. 
even a link that you can solve on board yourself into the data proposition. So join and enjoy with us. Remember, this is exclusively for data, but sometimes we go out and say, let's reach out to the wider community. Also follow our social media pages on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. That's Dada by Stanvik, so that you can get an update of what's happening um, in the space of wellness um, rewards. It, Dada has two pillars, that's financial and non-financial. Non-financial is mainly about education, information, rewards and wellness, and networking. And that's why even when we begin the meetings, we will ask you to post your business what you do, so that at least if there's someone who's looking for a contact of what you do, they can easily chip in. So it's been an absolute pleasure having you this morning. Glad to have um, to have had a speaker who's impacted to all of us. I hope you can go back and do some radical therapy to yourself. I will also do it to myself. And let's add clock together and become better men and better women. So have yourselves a good day and see you next week on Wednesday as we host Catherine Masakali. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Samuel, it can be. We're a nation of dreamers, believing in our dreams. Hatua kwa hatua Bidi kwa bidi